So, Streamabot looks a little different now. In an effort to update my old videos, I'm gonna show you how to set it up as a beginner. And then I'll show you some examples on how to use it. All right, so first things first, you wanna go to streamer.bot and this will be the page that you see. From there, all you have to do is make sure you download the latest version from here. It'll bring you to releases and you want to click download. From there, you will get a zip file. You want to extract it by clicking extract all. And here you can choose where to put it. Let's click extract. And inside this folder, you will find streamerbot.exe. Now, the smart thing to do here is to create a shortcut or a pin to start. That way, every time you want to open it, it'll be right there. And congrats, you now have Streamerbot on your computer. When you open it, the first thing you will see is the home tab, and you'll see some shortcuts to the most popular tabs. In our case, one thing we really wanna pay attention to is on the top right here where it says connected. We wanna pay attention to it because it'll tell us if Streamerbot successfully connected to OBS Studio and also our streaming platform in this case, Twitch. Now, since you're opening it for the first time, you have not connected those yet. So let's do just that. So what we're gonna do is on the left here, we're gonna go under platforms. And by the way, if you don't see like the words here, you just have to click on the menu. It will collapse it or expand it. So under platforms, you wanna go ahead and choose whatever platform you stream on. If you wanna stream on YouTube, you click on YouTube. I don't, I don't I shouldn't have to tell you that. <laughs> and yes, you can connect to multiple platforms at once. In my case, we're gonna go on Twitch here and you wanna find where it says accounts. And what you're gonna see is a broadcaster account and a bot account. Right next to that, you will find the login button. Now, to quickly explain the difference, broadcaster account is the account that you're going to be broadcasting from. So that's your Twitch username. So this one is necessary to log in with because that's how Streamerbot is gonna have all the information about your account. Now, a bot account is if you have a separate Twitch channel that you want to use as a bot, meaning that if you wanna type something in chat that is automated, for example, then your bot account will be the one sending those messages through Streamerbot. Now, even though I do have a bot account, I don't use it for about purposes. So it's completely fine to only have your broadcaster account connected. That just means that if you need to send messages through Streamerbot in chat, it's your broadcaster account that will appear. And yeah, from there, all you have to do is click login. It will open a page and then you have to click authorize. And that's all it is. Once you come back here, you should see your account. It should tell you your status, if you're affiliate or partnered, but also top right, you should see that Twitch is connected or YouTube or Kick or whatever you connected, all right? Now, the second thing that you want to connect here is OBS Studio. I'll collapse platforms, and this one is called Stream Apps. So that's the tab where you will find OBS Studio, Streamlabs Desktop, Meld Studio, and Polypop. So we're gonna click on OBS Studio, and the way it communicates with OBS Studio is through what is called a WebSocket connection. So in your case, you will probably see nothing here. All you have to do is right-click, click Add, you want to name it OBS, like I did this one. Make sure it's on version five. And then here you can set up a password if you want. Something you also want to turn on is auto connect on startup and reconnect on disconnect. Personally, I like my retry interval to be smaller. So I usually go with 10 or even five seconds, which I'm realizing is not set up on mine. So let me do that right now. So that means if it loses the connection between Streamerbot and OBS Studio, it will try to automatically reconnect. So once you click add and you have this in here, you're not done yet. Now you need to go in OBS Studio and make sure that the connection is matching. Now I'm using OBS to record this right now. All you have to do is go to tools and find WebSocket server settings. And from there, you wanna make sure that the server port is matching. And if you wanna use the password, you can enable authentication and then basically copy paste the password on both. You can also click on show connect info and make sure that the port is matching there, okay? Once you feel like this is matching, you can go back to Streamerbot, right click on that connection and click connect. Yours will say connect. And once you're connected, you will have some info on the right here. For example, it's detecting that I'm not streaming, but I'm recording right now. And believe it or not, you're pretty much done, but that's how you set up Streamerbot. You just gotta make sure you're connected to your streaming platform and your broadcasting software. That's it. Now, okay, you're excited. What's next? Well, I'm gonna collapse this. Let's give you some examples of the most popular way of using Streamerbot. And that's gonna be under actions and cues. So if you go to actions, right there, this is basically going to be the basis of controlling stuff in general. <laughs> you can create actions, but that's gonna be the name of whatever you want it to do. And you can right click on the action box 
give it a name, test action. You can put it in a group by typing the name of your new group here. And that's how I have them organized. Then click OK. So you see mine appears under the none group <laughs> and it's right there, test action. From there, you can decide what it's going to do. So sub actions is what's going to actually do stuff. <laughs> so right click under sub actions, go to add. And from there, I want you to go ahead and literally hover over every single option that seems relevant. Core, very relevant. OBS Studio, super relevant. Twitch, if that's your platform, YouTube, Provo, and Kick, right? In fact, even from there, I want you to click on stuff. For example, if I go add OBS Studio, and let's say that I wanna play with a source, I would go to sources, and then it'll tell me everything that it can do to a source. Simply based on those sub actions, once you know about all the possibilities that you have with those sub actions, you can come up with creative stuff to do anything. Something very simple is set source visibility state. So OBS sources, you can make them visible or invisible. You're going to have this dialog box will tell you, hey, what's scene? In my case, it's going to be scene two. Uh, what source? My source is called circle cam. And the state is either visible or hidden. So this action will hide that source. In fact, I can test it right now. And there it is. Click OK. And it will add it right here, right? Now, how can you trigger this? Well, up top is where you select the trigger. You can right click, go to add. And once again, I want you to go ahead, read everything, every option. Every single question that I get about StreamerBot could have been answered if you took five minutes to just read. <laughs> For example, how do I trigger this using a command? Well, you go to the part that says trigger, and then you look for the part that says command. Core, commands, hold on. <laughs> right click, add, core, commands, and command cooldown doesn't seem like the right thing. Command triggered, that seems like the right thing. And I can click command triggered, Again, dialog box that will ask me which command. And here I can see I have some commands that I already created, but yours will probably be empty if it's your first time. But thankfully, we can create a command straight from here. So let's create a command. All right. Now, be not afraid for this is very, very simple. Under name here, you type the name of the command. I'm going to call it cam bye bye. Under commands here. I'm going to type the actual command that I need to type to make the cam go bye bye. I'll put exclamation mark cam bye and I will click OK and then OK. And now I will see my trigger. So at a glimpse, I can see that my test action action is triggered by a chat command and it hides one source, which is my webcam. So now if I pull up my Twitch chat, for example, because that's the platform I got connected, exclamation mark cam by press enter. Ta-da! That's simple. Now let's say I wanted to have the cam come back, right? I could set it up in this action itself. All I have to do is make it wait a couple seconds. So add sub action core delay, let's say two seconds, so 2000 milliseconds. And then add, what is it? OBS Studio, what's my camera? It's a source. What do I want to play with? The visibility, boom, easy clap. What scene is it in? Scene two, what's the name of the source? Circle cam, what's the state that I want right now? Visible. So right now my action hides my camera, waits for two seconds, turns my camera back on, and it still has the same trigger. So if I type cam by, bye bye camera, one, two, boom. Welcome back camera. And that's it, that's it. As I said before, I want you to go and actually play around with every single source and trigger that you can because, oh, what about channel points? It's here. It's going to be in triggers, right? What if I want to play a sound? There's got to be something under sub actions that says play a sound, right? Or you can add your sound to OBS Studio because it accepts media sources. So audio, video and things like that. But also StreamerBot, you know, you go to core, you go to sounds. Look at that. Play sound directly. Play sound from a folder. Beautiful. Oh, what if I want to, I don't know, trigger a filter of my camera? Well, where's your camera? It's in OBS. OK, cool. Go to OBS Studio. What's your camera? It's a source. Boom. Where's the filter at on the source? OK, cool. Set source filter state. It's very intuitive. Just read and you'll figure it out. Set source fil 
Felter state. <laughs> what's the scene? Scene two. What's the source? Circle cam. What's the filter? Circle. What do I want this filter to do? You can make it visible, the filter that is, or hidden, right? Let's, let's do hidden, for example, right? Boom, I still have the same trigger. So now if I type cam by, it's gonna remove my circle filter. Now, all that being said, there are 30 videos currently in my StreamerBot playlist that I will link below. And you can find out how to do all sorts of really cool stuff. For example, in this one, using chat commands, people type exclamation mark song and an iPod shows up, shows the song and then disappears. The movement is just a filter on a source. The source is a browser source with Nuddy's MP3 player and the iPod is a video that I made available for free. In this video, utilizing chat commands, people can type mouth, color, eyes and face to dynamically change this PNG tuber of a Peak Scout character. Everything was just images that you put in OBS Studio and then it flips it, using StreamerBot to turn things off and turn things back on. In this video, we use StreamerBot to create some sort of chat game where they can type a command and have a chance to redeem a loot box animation of different knives. We actually use StreamerBot to play with the chances of getting specific knives, so some of them are more rare than others. So yeah, StreamerBot is so powerful that you could create your own chat games with it. In this video, I show you my meme setup with green screen video videos that you can get from YouTube and people can just trigger them using Twitch channel points. Every action can have any trigger you want. Because I use channel points doesn't mean that you can't make it commands. In this one, we use Kendrick Lamar's mustard to make a custom alert using StreamerBot. Look at that. One, two, three, four, mustard. <laughs> we create some shockwave effects. And in this one, we create a channel point reward that turns you into a GTA loading screen live. So yeah, all that to show you all the different possibilities you have with StreamerBot. Once you really start using it, it becomes super easy to come up with pretty awesome stuff that are pretty much absolutely unique to your own live stream. Not some preset that everyone can recognize from a website. You can truly make it yours and you can make it as advanced as you want. One last thing I will say about StreamerBot so you can really, really understand just how powerful it is. I've been mostly talking about, you know, Twitch and OBS Studio because that's what my audience wants to see. But StreamerBot is much more than that. StreamerBot can actually not only just accept code, but also do some useful stuff in your everyday life. For example, keyboard press is a thing that you can do, run a program. So even if you're not a live streamer, there are some things that you can automate using StreamerBot. I personally have a couple of actions that will help me. For example, if I'm playing a game and I need to press a button over and over again, I have this command. What it does is press a key. You can see in this case, it's five. I don't even remember why I have that. And then wait seven seconds and actually play this action over again. So it's in a loop until I, you can see this one is red, deactivate or reactivate it. Anyways, that's enough. Go watch my playlist and subscribe and turn on notifications and also follow me on Twitch. Bye-bye.